Hello, my name is David Rosen. As you probably know by now, I'm one of the top real estate brokers at Douglas Elliman in New York City. And today I want to talk to you about the difference between gross proceeds and net proceeds. A lot of the time, estates hire me to sell a home. And when an estate, that means, you know, someone died and one or multiple heirs are getting that money, the amount you sell it for is a lot different than the amount they receive. Even if you're not in a state, let's say you lived at a home for 20 years, how much money do you really end up with? If I sell a home for a million bucks, how much money are, am I gonna get my net proceeds? So there's some key benchmarks that you should be mindful of. So here are the, the good news. First, for a long time now, the estate tax limit has been very high, over $5 million. Now that might be eliminated completely or it might maintain the same, but there's no tax, generally speaking, on money transferred for an estate under $5 million. Now you have to consult a professional. I'm not qualified to give that advice, but you know that's the type of information we know anecdotally as real estate brokers. So what do you have to be mindful of? Well, here are the big time closing costs that will be in the difference between the gross sales price and what you get in the pocket. The big one is your long-term capital gains tax. That fluctuates depending on Congress, but what it's been uh, typically depending on your tax bracket is around 15%, sometimes as low as 8%. So say it's 10% of the profit uh, then you also might have a city and state long-term capital gains tax. Um, as of 2016, depending on your tax bracket, that was roughly a 28% total amount between city, state, and federal uh, estate uh, long-term cap gain taxes. Now your other uh, big expenditures are your real estate broker. I know, I know, I know, but you know, real estate broker cost 6%. Sometimes if you want to pay them seven or 8%, that's great. Maybe you get them to do it for a little less, who knows? Um, also the building sometimes has something called a flip tax. That could be 2% and, uh, or it could be any number. I mean, it could be as much as 25% in some buildings of the profit. There are many ways to minimize your, your outflow and maximize your inflow, your net proceeds. When I work with sellers, I do what's called a net closing sheet. Each and every building, each and every situation is custom. So how much you're actually gonna get is a huge amount of this process and it should influence your decision. You should always be thinking of your net proceeds and that's specifically the type of information that I'm gonna share with you when we sit down and we talk about selling your home. Thanks, and if you have any other questions about net proceeds versus gross proceeds, please do not hesitate to reach out. I'd love to talk to you about this and I will be happy to take my time and refer you to top uh, pl uh, financial planners, um, accountants, and attorneys who can give qualified advice on this. And in the meantime, I'm qualified to create spreadsheets that give you general numbers on how much money you're gonna get when you sell your home. My name is David Rosen. You can uh, email me, uh, message me, Find me on social media, I'm happy to help.